Good morning, folks. We've got details on yesterday's large earthquake, also a rundown of the top science news around the world and beyond. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star, very quiet. The only features of note are the coronal holes, which directly connect to Earth magnetically and which push more intense solar wind. One of those faster streams impacted the Earth yesterday. It was so moderate, it almost just looks like more low-level variability in the data. Earth's magnetic field can still handle moderate streams with ease. Of course, the big story yesterday was a 6.4 earthquake striking Southern California, their largest in two decades. Let's take a quick moment to hear what we said in yesterday's morning news. This is not related to the snowmelt alert in play for the U.S. fall to the summer. That alert must continue, by the way. Indeed, it wasn't just yesterday we'd focused on the U.S. West Coast. They were under top alerts this summer due to snowmelt excess and getting a year's worth of four shocks by May. It was on our official alert map when the quake struck too, and also for one of the QuakeWatch.net forecasters. His name is Counselor, and I won't blow up his spot any more than that. Congratulations. But also, folks, this may not be the end. The fault that this struck was not San Andreas, but a connecting fault, and of course, Cascadia needs to release pressure too. This quake did not end the USA alert. Up next, while the earthquake was making the news, the atmosphere on the eastern side of the country lit up. It was a major outburst of lightning and storms and put on a show for locals and unfortunately also became deadly and injurious in South Carolina. We've got some hard science coming up at the end, so let's take a moment here to enjoy La Silla's view of the solar eclipse. ESA Observatory in Chile was perfectly positioned to see the event. We also have the moon shadow overlay in the corner as well, linked to all of their videos found below. Let's go to a paper on different types of methods to predict solar cycles. The paper did an excellent job collecting lots of forecasts that are out there and plugging them into one table. Must admit, most are a bit higher for a forecast of solar activity than I would have imagined. They do have the magnetism chart in there as well, which, as we've been saying, the sun has more magnetic power right now on the doorstep of the next solar cycle than we did before cycle 24. It's also interesting that the forecast at the bottom of the list is the lowest forecast I've seen, even lower than the one NASA scientist who predicted a Dalton-like period. By the way, it did go find that article with the lowest of all predictions and link that one for you below as well. They believe it is a true stepping stone down into grand minimum, which would begin immediately afterwards. Mars dust storms are always a treat. Here we find the northern polar zone with a massive dust cloud and also segment shots showing the progression of the cell. Up next, Nova, but not a rapid explosion, a slow climbing excitation that finally crescendos in a release. That is what they say happened to HSC-16. It had a brightening Nova event that lasted 100 days to peak. And then, of course, it had its slow fall off over time. One wonders if the long period recurrent micronova might be looking the same. Last but not least, globular clusters and dwarf galaxies should be a function of the mass of the system and its age and metallicity. With this, they are able to look at the Milky Way and Andromeda and all of their modeling and determine what should be around different galaxies but they can't. We've seen it with the Milky Way and Andromeda and here with Centaurus A. They do not match the predictions in a wonderful follow-up to their 2018 paper saying that dark matter models could also not predict the polar orbit of those dwarfs. I wonder why. We greatly appreciate your support. Still on alert, United States. Lots of weather tonight as well, so we've got your next 24-hour wind maps and those shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 525 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.